and no, no computers, just lay on the couch and listen for him. So I did that, and I really feel like he told me to, to, to repeat this. I'm just gonna read down the notes. I'm not gonna preach it. But I do have to say this because I feel like there's been a, a stumbling block put for some, not everybody, but for some in this house. And I feel like I have to address it. I'm gonna use a lot of Bible, which I don't always do, but I am today. So I was gonna go down the list. Titus, the book of Titus, chapter three, verse five. It says this, it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. God saves because his mercy and grace, not by our deeds. Easy, easy cheesy, salvation 101. The issue is, Jill, we believe that unto salvation, but we don't believe that into sanctification. What happened? What do I mean by that? I mean by we pick it up, we believe that salvation is a free gift. And his mercy and his grace and his righteousness is available unto salvation. But we don't, they don't stop there. We need that mercy and grace and righteousness through the whole journey, through the whole race. You understand that? And I'll, and I'll explain why Ephesians 2 8 says this it is not by our doing, but a gift. Often, we believe grace, righteousness, mercy. And I said that. Let me read another one. Isaiah 64, 6 says this. Our best, our righteousness as, as filthy rags. You all know that one, right? Isaiah 64, 6. Let me say it a different way. Our effort to live right is as filthy rags. This is post-salvation. This is a before salvation. This is in, in the journey of sanctification. This is in the race. That our best effort, our best attempt is as filthy rags. Not from God. If it's not from God's righteousness, if it's not from his grace and mercy, it doesn't please him. Let me say that again. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get somewhere, but I gotta build a, I gotta build a, the bridge to get there. Listen to me. If it's not coming from righteousness, grace, and mercy, don't matter what you do, it doesn't please them. Go feed the poor, don't please them. The, the sinners do that. I'm building it. You can, so the Bible says, be holy as I am holy. You can't be holy. You can't be holy. You are made holy through grace, righteousness, and mercy. Then my actions don't line up. That's because as you operate under grace, righteousness, and mercy, you, you get greater revelation of Jesus. And as you get re greater revelation of Jesus, then you organically become like Jesus. All effort should be erased. And I'll tell you why. The moment you think your works, your surrender, your discipline, your effort has anything to do with your holiness, with your righteousness, with your acceptance, with your spirituality, you become demonic, toxic. I'll explain. I don't believe that, Pastor Nathan. Well, Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, you whitewashed tombs, you creatures of death. What were they doing? They were doing all the right things, but it wasn't from mercy, grace, and righteousness. And because of that, it became a rebellious religious spirit. It became witchcraft. The rebellion is as the sin of. There are people operating in witchcraft because they're doing it. good things wrong. The mindset, that mindset, that it's anything to do with you. That has anything to do with you. That mindset creates cracks in you. That mindset opens doors to self-righteousness. It opens doors to pride. It, spells, it opens doors to feeling uh, a, in being or feeling a, you're superior spiritually than other people. It comes because God 
told me to be holy, and I'm trying to be holy, but I'm trying it in my will, and my power, and my might. And because you do that, literally, it's, it creates the opposite effect. I'll give you more Bible. I know a lot of people have opinions, so I'm throwing the Bible out there so you can, you can put your opinions where they belong. Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is what? It's impossible to please God. Without what, faith in what? Faith in Jesus. What about that? That's such a generic thing. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. When I grew up, it was for power and authority, but that's not even right either. Without faith in his mercy, without faith in his righteousness, without faith in his grace, you can't please him. Go do a word study. Go do a word study. You can't please him. Well, I believe I should do this, and I should, I should, the Bible says we should, uh, um, true religion is, is take care of orphans and widows and all those feeding the poor and all that stuff. You know what I mean by that? That's all good if it comes from the source of faith, righteousness. But guess what? Even Jesus, because there's a timing is everything, obedience is everything. If, if some people's belief system was right, then Judas was right and Jesus was wrong. Explain. Because when Mary broke the alabaster box over him and and, and prepared him for burial. Judas sat there and said, that's stupid. That should have been sold for money so they could what? We know that his agenda was wrong. He was still in front of the money bag. We know that. But what did Jesus say? The poor shall always be here. It's a crazy thing. There are so many people who agree with Judas more than Jesus. Because we're trying to in our might and our power, not by might, not by power, but what? By your spirit, says the Lord. Faith that pleases God is faith in his might, his power, his righteousness, his mercy, his grace. When you think you have, I gotta say it again, when you think you have anything to do with it, be holy because I am holy. You think you, your effort is trying to make you holy. You are an error. You are in biblical error. You're actually in the law. You're in the wrong Testament. I have to say this because I feel this is where it's coming from because everybody's like, well, I don't, I, I just, I'm done. But everybody sits there and says, everybody wants to be like, oh, you better watch out for those carnal Christians. No, you better watch out for those self-effort Christians. Carnal Christians aren't dangerous. They're carnal. They're going to live their life. They're going to maybe go to heaven. That's Jesus' call. But that's just a carnal Christian. The dangerous ones, that's it. They're they're self-effort Christians are the dangerous ones. There's the ones that make problems. You hear me, Mom? That's why he spoke to me in the office tonight. I did not. Jesus said, turn it all off, put the music on or instrumental on. I didn't have my Bible. I had nothing. I listened to him. He gave me everything, even the scriptures. I can't remember last time I wrote Titus. I was like, man, I forgot Titus was in there. (laughs) But I have to say that because we put all the mean, the bad on the carnal people. And that's not the bad. The bad is the self-effort people. I prophesied that we're going through a threshing floor. If you try to get yourself in a threshing floor, you're in biblical error. We talked about surrender. If you try to get yourself in a surrender, say, then how's it happen, Pastor Nathan? It happens organically as you have faith that pleases God in his mercy, grace, and righteousness. And then what happens is it happens organically. Some people are trying things that I've tried for 30 years and it don't work. It doesn't work. I bet you you're not trying anything I haven't already tried. Come to me and let's talk. Come to my dad. Let's talk. We've been in this game forever. Where's Junior? I don't know if I saw it. Saw it, saw it. We've been in this game forever. We've seen pretty much everything under the sun. We tried everything under the sun. We've knocked on doors. We've done everything. I hated when he did that. I was shy. But I'm telling you, how is the Leviathan? How is it getting in? I've been asking God that. How is it getting in? 
How is it infiltrating the camp? How is there a crack? How? We just, oh, let's just pray against it. No, we got to seal the crack up. You don't seal the crack up. There it is. I don't think my mom hates when I say this, but I wouldn't invite anybody in this room to come to me. And, I, and let's talk it out. Because I know I have the scriptures. I have the Holy Spirit. And I have the power. Everything required. Jill, that's everything required in the New Testament to validate a message. Is that what it says? It's not arrogant. But God, I'm trying to teach us. Let's seal the cracks. How do we seal the cracks? Because we have faith that pleases God. That's why I feel that there's been joy robbed in salvation. The Bible says that joy in our salvation. Is that what the Bible says? We should have joy in our salvation. There's so much, uh, there's no joy. You think Jesus walked the earth like that? No, he did not. There's no peace. Let's, we need to stop gossiping. I can't gossip. I just can't gossip. I got to stop gossiping. I got to stop gossiping. Uh, don't talk to me, Chris. Don't talk to me, Chris. What do you, oh, you said Denise's name. Oh, my God. Don't talk to me. Uh, that Denise might follow gossip. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Self-effort. You know how to do it? Go be with him. Go gaze on him. Go behold him. Go, go get a greater measure of faith in his righteousness, mercy, and grace. And all of a sudden, organically, everything including gossip, just doesn't even, don't have an appetite for it no more. And we're, we've gotten off the tracks a little bit because some other things have come in the house. And I'm not a sonship dude. I'm not. I mean, I believe in it, but I'm not all in it. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, some other things got in and and, and self-effort creeped in. And because self-effort creeped in, people started not doing things that please God, even though they're godly things. I gotta paint that picture. If you, you can do godly things, Joe, but it has to come from the right source. Because you know what? Sinners do everything we do. But we need to take care of orphans. Sinners do that. We need care of widows. There's sinners who do that. They're unrighteous. There are people who don't believe they do all those things. What well, separates us? It's the source. It's the faith that pleases him. Childlike faith. Where's my phone? I want to read one more thing. And I feel like we're supposed to repent. Mom over this house. Somebody sent this to me. I won't give him any credit. The first foundation, this person's talking six, but we'll just talk about the first. The first foundation is repentance. Repentance from what? Dead works and faith towards God. Repentance, which means changing our mind and believing correctly. Away from dead works. Anything we think we do that gains us something with God, that's not right. That's not faith. Trusting he actually did it towards God. The first century church, this is what they taught. The disciples, this is what they taught. Paul, this is what he taught. And then our Western Christianity comes in and the Catholicism and the Reformations and all the stuff, and now everything's mumble jumbled up. And I told you guys a long, long time ago that God is going to do an old, new thing. Y'all, how you remember me saying that? Months and months, maybe years ago. An old, new thing. And God has taken us back to foundational apostolic teachings. So well, I don't like that. Then you're saying you don't like the Bible because it's what Paul taught. And he wrote, what, three quarters of the New Testament? It's what Peter taught. It's what Titus taught. It's what Timothy taught. So I married the mother of John. So you might as well throw your New Testament in the trash because it's what they taught. Stay with me. I'm done. But I felt, is that okay? Was that good? All right. 
all that jail came to me in less than two minutes. So that's how I know it's the Holy Spirit. Zero study of the Word. He's told, I just obeyed. He downloaded. I went to the Scriptures, which you have to do. You have to go to the Scriptures after you hear Holy Spirit. A lot of people miss. You gotta know your Scripture. And then I was reading. I was like, oh my gosh, it all aligns. How good is our God? How good is I'm gonna let these guys go back into worship and all that stuff. But I really, I had to say that tonight. I'm going to go to Oklahoma. I might share the, same, share the same thing. I don't know yet. Whatever he says. But I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys. Mom, this is where the intercessors need to pray. They need to seal up. Brennan, shh. They need to seal up. We got to seal up the cracks. We seal up the cracks, intercessors. You understand that by doing this. I'm not saying good things are bad. I'm saying good things with the wrong source. Does not please God. You hear me? It has to come. That's where the demonic comes in, into a church, into a house. That's how people get confused in a church, in a house. They start getting lost, self-righteous, prideful, feeling spiritually superior. Your revelation is greater than everybody else's revelation, and even the pastors. And what happens is you enter into air, spirits come in, and all of a sudden you're just a total mess. He showed me that tonight. So let's lift our hands and we're going to repent. Father God, we repent of anything in our church. <laughs> God, we repent of any self-effort. We repent, Lord God, of anything we've done by our power and our might. God, we know, God, that you're the source. But sometimes we still catch ourselves falling, God, into self-effort. We fall, catch ourselves not leaning on our understanding, leaning on our might, not leaning on your understanding and your might, God. And so, God, as a church, we repent. In the name of Jesus, we repent and we change our mind. We turn and we change our mind, God. And if there's anything in us, Father, reveal those things to us so that we can turn properly and get our mind changed, God. So that, God, that the gates of hell cannot reveal. It can't enter in inside of us, God. And we pray not for the ones that are here. And we pray for the ones that we vicariously repent for the people that's not here, the family members that are not here tonight, God. We, we vicariously repent. That means we pray for people. We repent for people that's not here, things that are not. And, God, we pray tonight, God, vicariously repent over this house. It is your house. And then we only do what you tell us to do, God. And God, we only do it the way you. God, our misplaced faith, God, bring correction to it. Our misplaced faith, faith in our effort, faith in this person, faith in this preacher, faith in this thing. God, my faith is only in one thing, and that is Jesus and him alone. God, we repent for placing our confidence, God, in anything else, God. God, we repent, and we ask that the snakes be dead. We ask that the little snakes be dead. We ask, God, that the be sealed. God, we ask that God, God, that now that September is over and the prophetic word over this house September was fulfilled, God, that we will enter into an October. God, were you just going to have a, an October surprise for this house and this place? I pray that every curse spoken over this house, every gossip spoken over this house, every lie spoken over this house, every manipulation spoken over this house, it will not germinate and it will pray that you, God, align us. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart that knows you, God, that we see clearly. We see clearly. And God, we don't pick up, God, the old things of the past. We don't pick up of that self-effort. We don't pick up, God, my faith is in your goodness. My faith is in your mercy. My faith is in your grace. My faith is in the righteousness of Jesus. My faith is in you and you alone. Lift your eyes
pray for the leadership all the way down. There's really not a down. Pray for the whole family. God, I pray for it right now in Jesus' name. God, that nothing can stop us as long as all eyes on Jesus.